Entry-level RTX cards are becoming increasingly affordable on the used market and I paid just £150 for this RTX 2060 Super but did I get a good deal on it? Well, to find out, I've paired it up against games at both 1080p and 1440p so let's see how it gets on in 2023. This model of the RTX 2060 is the Zotac Mini and to be fair, I think it's a pretty decent card. When I bought it, it was incredibly dirty but in typical pro yam yam pc fashion we gave this gpu a good deep clean i even had to run the cooling shroud and even the cooler itself under the tap because it was just so dirty also i gave it some fresh thermal paste as well so this thing will be performing at its best today at its core the rtx 2060 super has 2176 cuda cores alongside this is 8 gigabytes of gddr6 memory which runs through a 256-bit bus, a memory config that actually makes sense, unlike the RTX 4060. However, these specs allow the RTX 2060 to perform similar to an RX 6600 from AMD or even a 2070 non-super, which is a bit weird because Nvidia kind of cannibalized their own stack back in 2019. As this is an RTX card, there are both RT and Tensor cores packed inside of this thing. These enable RT features like real-time ray tracing and DLSS. All of this comes in a package rated for a 175 watt, so this means that this should run perfectly fine with a 550 watt power supply as it requires only a single 8 pin PCIe power cable. So it's pretty power efficient for the performance that you're getting. The Zotac Mini is technically a lower end 2060 Super, but I have no complaints with this thing. There's no RGB on it, which to some is not even a problem at all. And the thing that matters is the cooling. And this is good because it only stayed in the low 70s while gaming, which is pretty good for a card this small. It also has an aluminium backplate, which does help with the cooling. And it also adds to the overall aesthetics and quality feel of this graphics card. So as far as I'm concerned, the Zotac Mini is a decent model. I've put the RTX 2060 Super up against a suite of games at both 1080p and 1440p. And as I've sold my test bench now, all testing has been done on my main system, which is actually my test bench again. However, the specs are a Intel Core i7-13700K clocked at 5.3 GHz, 32 GB of dual channel DDR5 memory running at 5600 MHz CL36, a Samsung 980 Pro NVMe Gen 4 SSD and an MSI Z690 Force Wi-Fi. I've done some tweaking to the RTX 2060 Super and I've added plus 90 megahertz on the core and I've added 500 megahertz onto the GDDR6 memory. This should be pretty obtainable for any RTX 2060 Super out there. So let's see how this thing gets on in 2023. First game up is Forza Horizon 5. This Microsoft racing game does look very good on the Ultra preset and that's what I went with today. Here at 1080p it got 74 FPS on average with a 1% low of 62 FPS. Switching this up to 1440p sees a reduction of 13.5% in the average frame rate going down to 64 FPS on average with a 1% low of 54. So both resolutions this game is totally playable. It's a racing game, so you'd probably want a bit more frame rate there, but it's kind of a casual one at the same time. So I think 64 FPS at 1440p is totally fine in this game, and the game looks absolutely amazing at 1440p with this preset enabled. So Forza Horizon 5, totally fine. Another racing game is F123, and this is the newest game in my benchmarking list today. With a very high preset enabled, rasterization performance was not too bad if I'm honest, leaving 86 FPS on average with 73 FPS for the 1% low. Upping the resolution to 1440p drops the average frame rate by 18.6% going down to 70 FPS on average with a 1% low of 59 FPS. So if you're playing F123 on a 2060 Super, I'd probably recommend the high preset or maybe even the medium preset if you want the extra frame rate because yes, 86 and 70 FPS on average for 1080p and 1440p respectively is not bad but in a game where you want a lot of frame rate it's not technically ideal is it so yeah use the medium or high preset in this game switching up to ray tracing though as f123 does have that and yeah i wouldn't recommend this at all this drops down the frame rate to 45 fps on average at 1080p and it drops it down to just 
31 at 1440p. Don't use ray tracing in this game. It does look quite a bit better, but it's not worth the performance dip, especially in a racing game like this. Four noise up next, and for some reason the high preset on this game is just ridiculously intensive. I don't quite know why. However, at 1080p, the 2060 Super got 70 FPS on average with a 1% low of 55 FPS. Switching this up to 1440p sees a massive reduction of 35% in the average frame rate, going down to 45 FPS on average. This is not great, especially in a game like Fortnite. It's not really that playable. And yeah, I don't recommend this preset for pretty much anyone who's playing this game. Maybe if you're playing Save the World at 1080p on a 2060 Super, 70 FPS is not too bad there. However, using my more competitive settings with the DirectX 12 API, at 1080p we see 246 FPS on average, which is a ton better in this game. So if you've got 240 hertz panel, these settings are totally fine. Switching up to 1440p sees a reduction of 21% with the average frame rate going down to 194, and there's a 1% low of 133. Still, yet again, totally playable if you've got a 144Hz 1440p panel. Use these settings in Fortnite, you'll be having a blast here. Cyberpunk is up next and we actually got away with the high preset here, which is kind of unheard of here on the channel, but still at 1080p, the 2060 Super got 73 FPS on average with a 1% low of 56 FPS. The game looks good, no complaints here. Switching this up to 1440p, this sees a drop of 34% in the average frame rate, going down to 48 FPS on average with a 1% low of 34. Here, if you're playing at 1440p, I'd recommend dropping down to the medium preset, and the game should still look pretty decent, you'd be able to keep the textures on high, and I think that is probably the way to go if you're playing at 1440p in Cyberpunk with a 2060 Super. Next game up is Horizon Zero Dawn, and yeah, the 2060 Super performed very well in this game with the favour quality preset enabled. At 1080p, it got 114 FPS on average with a 1% low of 88 FPS. Switching up to 1440p sees a reduction of 31% in the average frame rate, going down to 78 FPS on average with 66 for the 1% low. This is totally playable in a game like this. You're aiming for around 60 FPS anyways. The favour quality preset looks great. Performance is great here as well. You shouldn't have a problem playing Horizon Zero Dawn on a 2060 Super. Doom Eternal is a game that I started testing again because it's very memory intensive. It's not so intensive on the core, more so on the memory. And as we've only got 8GB of VRAM here, I decided to test it. For testing today, the Nightmare preset will do. And at 1080p, the 2060 Super got 194 FPS on average with a 1% low of 143. Performance is totally great here, nice and smooth, no complaint at all. Even switching up to 1440p, this sees a reduction in the average frame rate of 26%, which is lower than average that we've seen today. And it got 142 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 108 FPS. If you've got a 144Hz monitor, nightmare at 1440p in this game, totally fine. I can't really see any issue with the performance here. Switching up to the ray tracing performance in this game though, and yet again, I don't really recommend enabling it because this drops the frame rate down to 75 FPS at 1080p and 63 FPS at 1440p. Yes, this is still technically playable and even if you enable DLSS and put that onto quality, you'd be getting more frames there, but you're losing over half of your frame rate there, so I don't recommend it at all. Battlefield 2042 is up next and usually this is a bit of a CPU benchmark instead of a GPU benchmark but the 13700K has got everything covered here today. Even so, with the low preset at 1080p, the 2060 Super got 153 FPS on average with a 1% low of 106 FPS. Yes, the game doesn't look particularly great but this performance is not bad at all and it's yeah, I don't have any complaints with it at all. Switching up to 1440p though, we see a reduction of 31% in our average frame rates going down to 105 FPS. The 1% low also went down as well to 82. Still, this is pretty playable. Not technically ideal as you're not getting around 120 frames, but a lot of gamers would be fine with this sort of performance. So yeah, no complaints here. The last game up today is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Setting it to the basic preset here with high textures which we can do at both 1080p and 1440p with no performance impact there. So yeah, I'll take the high textures. 
Now 1080p, the 2060 Super got 136 FPS on average with a 1% low of 83. Switching this up to 1440p sees a drop of 30% in the average frame rate going down to 95 FPS on average with 55 FPS for the 1% low. So if you're playing at 1440p, I'd probably recommend enabling DLSS, but 1080p performance, totally fine in this first person shooter. At 1080p, I can't fault the rasterization performance. Every game tested today had no issues and all of the frame rates were above 60 FPS, even in Cyberpunk, which is known to be a pretty hard game to run, even though it's almost three years old now. So I can say at 1080p, even in the latest AAA games, I know I didn't really test them today, but performance will be totally fine, even with the 8GB of VRAM, mainly thanks to the 256-bit memory bus, which is not found in newer graphics cards. In some of the newer AAA games, 8GB of VRAM might be an issue if you're trying to run max out textures. Just lower these ever so slightly, maybe to even medium, which I know isn't ideal, but it's still playable on a £150 graphics card. Going on to 1440p and we do see some reductions in frame rates which were to be expected to be honest. Especially in Cyberpunk that did drop quite a bit, it did drop below 60 FPS actually so. But if you were to drop it down to the medium preset from high, I think you'd still be getting above 60 FPS in that title and I don't think it'd be a problem and the extra quality of 1440p would probably make up for the loss in visual fidelity. I would caution you though as at 1440p in newer games you will be struggling with the video memory. 8GB is kind of the minimum in 2023 so that is something you should definitely look out for but if you lower the quality presets down to like medium from high for instance I think you'll be okay. But if you want a graphics card for esports games at 1440p say if you've got a 1440p 144hz monitor I think the 2060 Super is a totally fine graphics card for you because all of these esports games they played totally fine on this thing. Ray tracing is technically possible as this is an RTX card, it does have the hardware for it. But then again, I probably wouldn't recommend using ray tracing at all as it's not really doable on a graphics card like this. Because to be honest, if you wanted more graphical fidelity, I think you'd be better off raising your preset from let's say high to very high or ultra. I think that would be a lot more beneficial to you because you would gain some visual fidelity yet you wouldn't lose more than half your frame rate so yeah. New to my testing is a cost per frame analysis and this sort of allows me to gauge the sort of the value proposition of a graphics card. So at 1080p the cost per frame is £1.17 for the RTX 2060 Super but then again I don't really have anything to compare it against because this is the first time me using cost per frame analysis in one of my videos. Switching up to 1440p and this rises to £1.61 so you're definitely getting more value at 1080p, that's a given with pretty much any graphics card out there, but 1440p is still not too bad. So from now on, I will be including cost per frame analysis on every one of my graphics card benchmarking videos, and I think it would be a lot more helpful in GPU comparison videos too, so make sure you stay watching out for future benchmarking videos from me. So do I recommend the RTX 2060 Super in 2023? And I'd have to say, I'm not too sure and that is because of AMD's Radeon RX 6600. It goes for around £180 brand new here in the UK and because it's brand new and because it's brand new you get no inherent risk which can come with used graphics cards and you get your warranty and all of them safety features as well. Also it's a newer card than this as it launched in 2020. Did it launch in 2020? RX 6600 launch date. Ah. It's two years newer than the RTX 2060 Super, so it would probably get better driver support than the NVIDIA counterpart. But then again, NVIDIA hasn't dropped driver support for the 900 series yet, so I don't think driver support is necessarily a thing you should be worrying about here. So if you don't care about productivity or any of the NVIDIA features like ray tracing or DLSS, the RX 6600 is definitely a graphics card you should consider at this price point. And this is why I wouldn't pay anything over £150 for a used 2060 Super. It's not really worth it over this price point if I'm honest. And anything over I just would recommend getting a new 6600 because it's just a better value proposition at that point. Yes it does have the same performance level but you're buying a brand new graphics card. So if you're anything like me and you have a genuine use case for an NVIDIA graphics card like CUDA Acceleration, DLSS or real-time ray tracing, even though I don't recommend ray tracing on this graphics card, 
The RTX 2060 Super is definitely a decent value graphics card, especially in this price bracket. But remember though, don't pay anything over £150 for this graphics card. So with this being said, I'm going to leave this video here. If you like this one, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content, and I'll catch you in the next one.